let's have a look at this story, which we've uh, talked about a little bit uh, throughout the course of the programme. This is the single-cell use of vapes. It's going to be banned on June the 1st next year. Five million were binned or littered in the last year alone. The government hoped that it will stop young people getting addicted to the sweet-flavoured e-cigarettes and reduce the appeal to children. Um, in a moment, we'll speak to Matt Crane, sales director at Riot's Lab. But first, John Waldron, policy and public affairs manager at Action on Smoking and Health, ASH, as they are more commonly known. Uh, John, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me on. Uh, what's your first response when you hear a story like this? Uh, so our first response is we have welcomed what's been announced today, the ban on disposables from next year. I think this is something which has really strong public support. Um, people understandably don't want to see these products littered all over the place or, you know, going into landfill in their thousands. And we know that disposable vapes have driven a really significant increase in, in the number of young people vaping. So I think it's and it was inevitable that ultimately these were going to be removed from the market. And, and you can see other countries making similar moves as well. I, I mean, th these things are legal. So, I mean, they're not making vaping illegal. So some might say, well, hang on a sec, you know, it's not North Korea or China. You know, what, since, what, what, why are the government getting involved in personal decision? Yeah, so I think um, you're right that the, the, um, there are lots of different kinds of vapes and currently these products are not legal. But the issue with disposable vapes, it's um, a little different to, you know, you'll see lots of other products on the market that are reusable, refillable. Um, but the issue with disposables is they are... Uh, as you said before, they're littered in really high numbers and go into landfill in really high numbers in a way that other products just don't. Um, they're quite difficult to recycle and they've clearly um, developed particular appeal for young people, partly because of the way they're marketed, but also just because of the, they're really cheap, um, available at pocket money prices in a way that other products aren't. Um, and so there really is a need to uh, address that by removing these products from the market. But it's worth saying this on its own, whilst it's welcome as a statement of intent, is not going to be enough to address youth vaping. Um, for that, we really need regulation to address the, the marketing, branding, flavours of vapes to reduce their appeal to children. And those are all measures which were included in the government's, uh, the previous government's tobacco and vapes bill, which the new government has said they're going to reintroduce. Um, but we really need to see that legislation reintroduced and put on the statute book to give the government the powers it needs to address uh, youth vaping. Isn't the usual problem with banning things is you know we can go back to you know the 1930s and you know whether it was booze in america or whatever uh, isn't the usual upshot that people will always find a way around it and sometimes more determined to do so yeah so that's, that's a fair point so one of the things we have well first and foremost i think it'd be really important that you know the government gets the enforcement right if you're going to make any kind of regulation or bans um, that's a key part of it. Trading standards, who are the ones who will enforce this, have welcomed it, but said they need more funding to support that enforcement, which is something we absolutely support. But we've already seen manufacturers start to um, introduce reusable, refillable versions of the kind of popular disposable products, which already suggests that um, this is driving a change in terms of what products are being marketed and sold. Um, and there are lots of other uh, types of vaping product on the market already that are reusable and refillable so it will be about encouraging people to switch over to those products instead and um, making sure the companies are continuing to adjust their products to make sure they're in line with these regulations uh, but the other side of it is in terms of addressing the wider illicit market for vapes which has been a bit of a challenge uh, one of the things the government's expected to do that the previous government announced is introduce a, an excise tax on vaping products so this would um, reduce prevent vapes being available at like pocket money prices which is one of the um, appeals for children but it would also bring vapes as a category into the excise regime which means that hmrc and border force can get involved in the enforcement of the illicit market and start stopping these products at the border before they get into communities and before they get into shops so that's something we really want to see um, in the budget next week is an excise tax on on vapes okay john thank you very much indeed john waldron policy and public affairs manager uh, Ash Action on Smoking and Health. Let's speak with Matt Cran, Sales Director at Riot Lab. Um, Matt, I'm going to take a punt here, but I assume you manufacture vaping devices. Correct, yes. Um, what do you make of this then? Because, you know, it's very, it was always tricky with people who manufactured cigarettes and whilst uh, to try and get anybody to, to in any 
form, defend smoking. Vaping is, of course, different to smoking. But many people say, well, look, you know, the jury is out, particularly on the, the flavoured stuff and some of the, the, the kind of crazy things that are out there, you know, bubblegum flavour being the obvious example. Um, surely you as a, a company want to see, you don't want to see kids of 10 and 11 uh, smoking vapes, whether they're using vapes, whether they're disposable or otherwise. Absolutely not. You know, we're um, the, the industry is here to help people quit smoking um, and it's done an, an amazing job at that. Um, with regards to the disposable ban, um, it's something that we welcome as a manufacturer and as a brand. We stopped selling disposable vaping products a couple of years ago due to the, the impact that they have on the environment. We launched our product with um, less carbon intensive materials for the manufacturing of the raw materials. We launched recycling bins, um, but unfortunately we had a return rate of less than 0.5%. And in the end, we were contributing to the problem of, of right. the disposables and the environmental impact. So yeah. we actually launched a new product um, at the beginning of this year, which is rechargeable. The battery can be recharged up to 500 times and it's very simple to use. So the consumers can still have a product, but it's a product that can help them quit smoking and help them stay off cigarettes. Mm. Um, that, that that can be charged up to 500 times and be recycled. Is that more attractive for kids then? Because they uh, over time they will uh, save money, won't they? As a brand, we do not do any marketing that's aimed at children. There are rogue brands and rogue illegal products on the market with sweet candy name flavours and cartoons. Um, but that's an enforcement issue. There's a few ways that can be dealt with. Um, a product has to be a product has to be notified to the MHRA. Yeah. to be listed on the market um, at that point the packaging should also be checked by the mhra and if it's child appealing it shouldn't be approved at that point it's yeah. simple um disposables they should they are currently legal to import into the uk and after the ban they will still be legal to import into the uk so there's not going to be much to stop these rogue traders still importing disposables after this ban unfortunately yeah. um does this sound any sort of death knell for the vaping industry on a wider scale here you know this was i can remember the late michael mosley doing a documentary on the bbc not he wasn't advocating vaping but he was he definitely said you know this is much much a much better option than smoking yeah, and yeah. now partly perhaps because of all the kind of bubblegum flavored stuff and the disposable thing um vaping is getting a very bad name it's almost parallel with smoking for some people yeah, for people that don't vape and that haven't quit smoking with vaping, I, I'd say I'd say you're correct. Yeah, this 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 particular law won't affect the vape industry. Um, we've seen in the in the last twelve months that a huge amount of people using disposables have already moved to refillable, more economical devices. Um, the tobacco and vape bill is a threat to the industry. If flavours are banned, um, we will see a huge black market, as similar into Australia and other countries that have banned flavours. Um, and plain packaging is also would be a bit of a disaster for the industry as consumers may feel that actually this product because it has to go in plain packaging is as harmful as the cigarettes that are in plain packaging so it, that that there is a there is a threat to the industry at the moment but i believe nhs public health england mm. all know the value of vaping and yeah. the, the the important role it plays in becoming smoke free <laughs> the united kingdom uh, and I'm, I'm with you on the the broader point as well i mean it's illegal to sell this stuff to kids right so you know th that that the, the law already exists and yeah. whilst di you know di the disposable things are, are clearly not because you see these things all over the place that's no one no one wants to see that but whether it was single use vapes or whether it was something more no shopkeeper should be selling that stuff to kids it still comes yeah. under the same rules and regulations of of smoking cigarettes Exactly. In, until there's enforcement, then there's going to be a black market, unfortunately, yeah. whether there's a ban on disposables, whether there's a ban on anything. Correct. I think you, you brought it up quite well with Ash that prohibition doesn't work, um, especially if there's no enforcement for it. Well, we'll watch with interest. Listen, Matt, great to have you on. Thank you. Um, and I definitely, definitely um, echo that last point. I mean, this is about there is already a law. Either. We don't need more laws in this country. We need people to uphold the laws that we currently have. I don't know anybody that would advocate kids smoking vapes. What's interesting about vaping, and I'm not the first to say this, of course, is that it's um, it's often taken up by kids who don't, that, that not as an option to smoking, because they used to smoke and want to give up. That's the case with some. Uh, but it's a completely separate thing. I, I've lost count of how many, you know, 16, 17 year olds, mates of mine who've got kids who've done it or do it. 
And I said, you know, do you ever smoke? And it's like, no, you know, they don't even think about it in that case. It's not even connected in their world. So getting people off that mentality, I think, is going to be, you know, pretty tricky. And I'm not absolutely sure that just banning single-use vapes is going to be the answer, ultimately.